Hello, Algebra 2 students. Today we're going to be going over the Unit 4 activity. So if you don't have that open already, go ahead and go to it, and let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to share my screen here this time. This is take two, the first time I forgot to share my screen, but I'm sharing my screen this time. Good. All right, so um, this is going to be talking about... Basically, we're comparing graphs of equations, uh, functions written out in equation form, and also functions written out in table form. We're also going to be doing it one other way, which is written in words. So we're going to be comparing different functions of those sorts. And let's go ahead and take a look. Make sure these don't have the answers revealed here. Um, so. Here we're going to be comparing these four different functions. Notice function f, it just shows a graph. Notice it's a parabola. It also gives you the equation here, so they're giving you both. For function g, they give you a table. You can see the table here for the x coordinates and then the resulting y coordinates. Function h is displayed in these words. Function h is 2 times the square of the difference of x and 1. And then function k is this equation here. Now, let's take a look at what we want to find. The function that has the least minimum value is function da, and the function that has the greatest minimum value is function blah. Okay, so we're looking at the minimum value, the lowest value, for each of these functions, and we're going to take a look at them each. Okay. First thing I want to look at is this function h. Let's write it out in an equation. So it says h is 2 times the square of the difference of x and 1. So that's this. Notice it's 2 times, 2 times the square of the difference between x and 1. So the difference between x and 1, it's 2 times the square of that. Okay, Hopefully that sort of makes sense. Um, so, And we're going to look at the minimum values for each of these. So this one, the minimum values just means the lowest value. So when we look at function f, its lowest value, its lowest value is negative 7. OK, so for function f, um, its, its lowest value is negative 7. Okay. What about for function g? Looks like its lowest value, say negative 2, 76, negative 1. What's its lowest value? Well, it looks like its lowest value is negative 5. Okay, so for function g, its lowest value is negative 5. What about for function h here? What is its lowest value? Well, if you were to graph it, and you can graph it on Desmos, but I kind of already know what it's going to look like. This minus 1 would shift it to the right 1, but it'd be a parabola, like so, with its vertex at 1, 0. So this one's lowest value is 0. It doesn't go down into the negatives, you see. And then lastly, this one, x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 8x minus 4. Well, I'm not sure what that looks like. But what I can do is I can open up Desmos graphing calculator, and I could put it right here. So it was x to the power of 4, x to the power of 4 plus 2x squared. plus 8x minus 4, plus 8x minus 4. What is its lowest value? So that would be down here. It looks like negative 9. So what was that? What was that function's name? k. So k's minimum value, its lowest value, is negative 9. So which of these has the lowest minimum value? Well, I would say that goes to k. So this one had the lowest minimum. Lowest minimum 
And which one has the highest minimum? Well, that would be H. So this is the highest minimum. Okay. So the least minimum or the lowest minimum, that was K. And the highest was H. Hopefully no questions on that. But basically, we're just looking at the lowest value of each of these functions. And you can see the lowest value on the graph for the ones that we graphed. And you can see the lowest value on the table. Um, its lowest value is negative 5. Okay. Compare functions f, g, and h and match the statements with the function they best describe. Drag each description to the correct location on the table. Okay, so this function has the lowest y-intercept. We also have this function as the highest y-intercept. Okay, and then we have this function is increasing over the longest interval, and this function is decreasing over the longest interval. Okay, so first let's focus on the y-intercepts. If we have the graph, like we do here, we can see the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. So where does our graph cross the y-axis? Looks like it crosses at 1. So this one's y-intercept is 1. Cross it, this purple graph crosses the y-axis at 1. So its y-intercept is 1. What's this one's y-intercept? Well, y-intercepts are always 0, comma something. The x-coordinate is always 0 when it comes to the y-intercept. So for this one, which of these is the y-intercept? Well, it must be this one, 0, comma, negative 1. So this one's y-intercept is negative 1. Again, this one had a y-intercept of 1. This one had a y-intercept of negative 1. What about this one? Function h is the sum of 3 and 4 times the cube of x the sum of 3 and 4 times the cube of x. So it's the sum of, so we're adding, 3 and 4 times the cube of x. 4 times the cube of x. So that's x cubed, like that. So this is, func this is function h here. So this is h of x. All right. I'm going to rewrite this to make it a little bit prettier. So I'm going to call it 4x cubed plus 3. That looks a little bit nicer. But what's this one's y-intercept? Well, remember I said that a y-intercept is always 0, comma something? So the x-coordinate we already know will be 0. But what will be the y-coordinate? that y-coordinate will be what its y-intercept is. So it's going to be 0, comma, something. Well, if I want to find the y-intercept, and this goes for any function, any function, to find the y-intercept, I could just replace the x with the 0 and find it. So it would be 4 times 0 to the power of 3, and then plus 3. Well, 0 to the power of 3, that means 0 times 0 times 0. Well, that's 0. 4 times 0 is 0. So this is 0 plus 3. And what's 0 plus 3? Well, that's 3. So this one's y-intercept is 0, comma, 3. So again, this one's y-intercept was 1. This one's y-intercept is negative 1. And this one's y-intercept is 3. So which one has the lowest y-intercept? That'd be this one. And the highest y-intercept? That'd be this one. Okay. Now let's talk about uh, how the functions are increasing or decreasing. First, let's look at this graph. So notice, uh, what does it look like for increasing? Well, it look like, looks like it's increasing here. See, it's going up, going up. Now you read it from going left to right. So we're reading from left to right. So as we go left to right, we're going up, up, up. But then it's decreasing right here. So it's decreasing, it looks, from this point to this point, And then it's increasing again. 
Okay, so it's increasing, then decreasing, then increasing. What about this chart? Well, notice as we go, as the X values increase, this one's decreasing, decreasing, still decreasing, still decreasing, and it'll continue to decrease. So this one's decreasing the whole time. This one's increasing, then decreasing, then increasing. So this one's decreasing the whole time. So we're gonna put this function as decreasing over the longest interval, because all it does is decrease, decrease the whole time. Let's, what about this one? Um, again, written in the equation, that was this. Uh, h of x equals 4x cubed plus 3. Now we can graph that. Let's go ahead and graph that. 4x cubed plus 3. Have to zoom out. But notice, notice this one looks a lot like that first graph, right? But notice it's increasing. It's still increasing, right? Even in this section, it's still increasing. There's one spot where it's kind of flat, but it never goes down, right? It's always increasing, increasing, right? It never goes, it never dips back down. See, this one dips back down right here, right? So this one has a part where it's decreasing, whereas this one was increasing the whole time. So this one is increasing over the longest interval. And that's it. Okay. Now here we're comparing two functions, just two functions, f of x and g of x. f of x has is this chart, and g of x is written in words. Let's go ahead and read these. It says function g is the sum of two and the cube root of the sum of three times x and one. Okay. So it's the sum of two. I'm going to go ahead and clear this. So it's the sum of, and it's 2. And the other thing we're adding is the cube root of the sum. So you notice it says the, the cube root of the sum of 3 times x and 1. So the sum of 3 times x and 1. So here's our equation. So it's the sum of two and the cube root of the sum of three times x and one. Okay. That that would be a, that's a tricky one to translate, but that's that's what this function is. So that's uh, g of x. Um, so remember when I talked about y-intercepts? Y-intercepts are always zero comma something. Well, x-intercepts are kind of similar. X-intercepts are always something comma zero. So the y-coordinate is always zero for the x-intercepts. So what's the x-intercept for this one? Well, three comma zero. So the x-intercept for this one is 3. So for f, the x-intercept is 3. And you can see the y-intercept here is negative 2. But that's not important. We're talking about the x-intercept here. So the x-intercept is 3, comma, 0. So for, for f, its x-intercept is 3. For g, how do we find its x-intercept? Well. What we could do is we can replace the g of x with 0 and then solve for x. So what would that look like? So that's going to be 0 equals 2 plus cube root 3x plus 1. So how would I solve for x here? How would I get x by itself? And by the way, Whatever I write on these, you should be writing. All right, this, will, this will help you a lot. So the first thing I should do, I want to get x by itself. So I'm going to subtract 2 both sides. So that gives you negative 2 on the left. On the right, it still has the cube root. 
of 3x plus 1. Okay, now how do I get rid of cube root? Well, the opposite of cube root would be to do it to the power of 3, cube it, right? So cube root and cube, they cancel. That means I have to cube the uh, left side as well. So on the right, the cube root and the cube, they cancel. So that leaves you with 3x plus 1. On the left side, negative 2 to the power of 3. Well, that means negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Well, that's negative 8. Now to get x by itself, I would subtract 1 from both sides. So that's negative 9. Equals 3x, because this cancels. Lastly, to get x by itself, divide by 3. x equals negative 3. Okay? So here, the x-intercept is negative 3. So now you should be able to answer this. The x-intercept of function f, is it less than, greater than, or equal to the x-intercept of function of g? Again, here are the x-intercepts. Okay. Now, I hope that made sense. Um, if you have any questions that didn't make sense or you want help with some other activity or some other thing in this class, feel free to email me. My email is t-t-r-i-g-g -G at o-f-y dot o-r-g. Okay, that's t-trig with two g's at ofy.org. All right, so I'll see you next time um, with uh, the next activity. Stop recording here.